Ladies and gentlemen, in this lecture series, I want to examine classification of products. Products have two major classifications, consumer products and industrial products. Consumer products are products that are sold for cases for the purpose of satisfying their personal and non business needs. That is when you and I and our family members buy some products, we buy them in our capacity as ultimate consumers. Ultimate consumers because we want to consume the product for the purpose of satisfying our personal needs and not for business purposes. Because it involves selling from a business organization to the ultimate consumer, it is known as B2C, that is business organizations selling to ultimate consumers. The other one is industrial products. Industrial products are products that are purchased by business organizations for the purpose of using the product in businesses. And this involves using the product to produce another goods or services. It may also involve selling the product by resellers, that is both sellers and retailers. When they buy in large quantity from manufacturer, they buy not because they want to consume the product, but because they want to resell. So both sellers and retailers buy from manufacturers for the purpose of businesses. And finally, to conduct business operations. A number of goods and services are purchased by business organizations to conduct their operations. For example, computer, copiers, that's photocopiers, groceries, that's provisions, stationaries. When banks buy all of these, from fellow business organizations, they buy them to conduct their services or operations. Who are the business buyers? They include industrial buyers or industrial firms, that is Unilever, Nigerian bureaus, seven non bottling companies. They are service providers, banks, tertiary institutions, primary and secondary schools, utility providers, that's discos, water corporations, and all of this. And I said the last one is resellers. Those are wholesalers and retailers. I will now want to look at the various typologies or classifications of these two products. Consumer products can be further classified into four. The first one is convenience product. The second one, shopping products. The third one is specialty products. And the final one is unsought products. I will look at each of these four categories of convenience products. Convenience products from the name simply means products that are low priced and that are widely distributed within the neighborhood of consumers. While trying to purchase this product, 
consumer needs not to engage in an extensive search for this product because the products are conveniently distributed. They are in the neighborhood. They are stocked and sold by Malam and other petty traders in our streets. Sometimes, vendors and hawkers go around in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, calling on people to come and buy the product. For example, every morning, bread vendors go through the nook and corner of streets asking people to come and buy products. So that is to say, loaf of bread are convenience products. By their nature, the unit price of convenience products are very, very low. That is why I said they are low priced and widely distributed products. So sometimes a child of four, five, six years can be asked to get the product from Malam's outside. The mother, the father needs not to get involved in purchasing convenience products. In marketing, we said consumer products are available at arm's length. That is, whenever you stretch your arms, you should easily and quickly get convenient products. Convenience products are further classified into three. The first one is staple products. Staple products are those products that consumers readily plan for whenever they are going to stores to make purchases. They drop a long list of items that are required when they get to the store. So this is why it is staple. The staple is derived from the fact that this category of product is often planned for. The second category is impost products. Impost products are products that consumers do not plan to buy, but they purchase it whenever they, they feel the need for it, especially when they cite the product. And much of the traffic sees on our cities, in our, in our cities or on our roads, satisfy the impost needs of buyers. That is, they are products we do not plan for, but we are most likely to buy them when we see them. For example, in the traffic, we see very cold, chilling, bottled water or soft drink. Even though we did not plan to buy it, we may be attracted by that. And when we buy it, we say it is an impulse product. It is purchased to satisfy our impulse needs what we never plan to buy. And the last category of convenience products is emergency products. These are products that are purchased suddenly and again without planning for it unexpectedly. And we have very good examples of uh, emergency products. Their umbrella. We leave home without planning for rain or expecting rain to fall. Then, when it starts raining, of course, if you can get umbrella within uh, the area we have, we quickly, if you can afford it, we quickly purchase one. If you sustain injury, we need plaster. We need first aid. If we are traveling and on highway, Lagos is by the express highway, for example, and our cars are broken down, of course, because of the danger associated with being stranded on the highway. So we need the services of towing vehicle. These are the three categories of con uh, convenience products. Then the second category of consumer product is shopping products. 
shopping products, again by the name, refer to major durable, semi durable, and high priced products that consumers characteristically compare between available brands before they make purchases. Unlike convenient products that we do not compare between available brands due to the low unit value of the products. In the case of shopping products, the unit prices are very, very high. That's why they are expensive. Again, they are also durable or semi-durable. They are products that can last below three years or above three years. And because of their durability, they are usually more expensive than convenience products that we can buy and use of within a day, within hours, within a few minutes. Soft drink can be finished within some minutes. A loaf of bread can be consumed within a few minutes. But uh, uh, shopping products are usually more durable than convenience products. So they are both durable or semi-durable. Semi-durable if they are less than three years. Durable if they are more than three years. And because of their high unit cost, consumers usually compare between available brands before they choose their preferred brand. And they make these comparisons along a number of criteria. This include prices of each other, uh, price, price of available brands, brand names of the available products, supplier reputation, that is where you are buying the product, are you buying in the open market or are you buying in stores? Then design, warranty, quality, product performance. So consumers who ordinarily compare between available brands and on the basis of this comparison, they will not choose the best that is rated high on this criteria. For example, consumers want to buy television. So there are a number of brands. We have LG, Samsung, Sony, Aya Tamoku, and a number of shopping electronics products. So when, before they now choose to buy the preferred product, they need to compare between all these available brands before they select one. There are two major types of shopping products. They are one, homogeneous shopping products, and two, heterogeneous shopping products. The difference between these two categories of shopping products lies in, it lies in the degree of their exclusivity. When we are talking of homogeneous products, we are talking of non-exclusive products. Non-exclusive because they are essentially similar. If you compare between two, three, four, five products, you do not see significant differences among them. And for these reasons, this decision is based on price. The one that is most attractive in terms of price may be the one that majority of customers will select. Heterogeneity, alternatively, is that the products, four, five, six products, appear to be highly differentiated in the eyes of consumer, unlike homogeneous, that they are not different. But heterogeneous shopping products, consumers see them as see one or two of them as significantly differentiated from others. And as a result, the purchase decision is based on this difference and sometimes on the image of the brand. The third category of consumer product is specialty products. Again, from the name, these are special products that consumer perceive as having a high degree of feasibility and identity. 
they are highly feasible and identifiable. Unlike shopping products that consumers are ready to compare between alternative brands, in the case of specialty products, they are not ready to compare. They already know their preferred brand. That's why it is having a high degree of brand feasibility and identity. They know whenever they see the preferred brand, they know it. If the preferred brand is not available in one, two, three stores, they will not mind spending more time, energy, and money to visit stores where they can get it. And examples of specialty products include Rolex watches, include Rolls Royce, Gucci bags, expensive Italian shoes, expensive furniture, and so on and so forth. And the last category is unsold products. By determination, these are products that consumers do not seek to buy. They do not seek to buy either because they are not aware that the product is in the market. Or alternatively, when they are aware that the product is in the market, they are still not interested in buying the products. On uh, products can be further classified into two. The first one is regularly on products. The second one is newly on products. Regularly on products are products that consumers do not have a need for now. They may need and purchase the product in future. Then the second category is newly unsought products. They are products which even consumers are aware of their existence in the market. They are still not interested in buying them. Good example of regularly unsought products are insurance products. A good example of newly unsold product is smoke detectors. Smoke detectors are devices that are installed to, to raise alarm anytime there is a threat of infernal fire outbreak. So many of uh, rich, wealthy people who are aware of this product, they don't care about it. They don't seek to buy it. Thank you for watching.